not at all. Like some dude who doesn't know me I really hates banter. my opinion. Good. <laughs> Guess what? They're out there. Jocko. So good. Um Yeah, that was that was a uh, I didn't expect to go down that road, but it was it I, definitely took that horse down that old town road. Uh, right, right on the right in some Satan shoes, putting some put some uh, Satan shoes on that horse. Landed right in Satan's lap, if you will. Uh, I uh, I mentioned last week that I was gonna get into NFL scouting report. I was gonna give some outlier that most people don't know. Um, I have my favorites, and they're usually not big names. Everyone everyone likes the big names. Everyone likes homeboy from Clemson, including me. So why the hell do I need to talk about homeboy from Clemson and beat that horse to death, right? Yeah, they got um, him covered. The NFL draft, I believe, is on the 29th. I have it in my notes. Yeah, so. April April 29th. So we have we have a few. We have what one, two more shows? I think two yeah. more. I'll, I'll be able to do this two more times. So my scattering report is on. Uh, I'm extremely biased. He's a uh, very much an outlier, very talented individual. Didn't have much time in college, um, especially due to COVID. Uh, Simi Fahoko. Simi Fahoko was a four-star athlete that got recruited at to go play at Stanford. A uh, wide receiver. He is Mormon, so he went on a two-year mission after he graduated high school to South Korea. So okay. he didn't play football for two years. Right, and which he was is a, a long time. He, I'm assuming he was a, a good like prospect coming out of high school too, right? A four star. Oh, he's a four star, and he just a four star and took two years off. That's a that's a commendable act right there. Right. Um, even if you don't agree with uh, him, his his religion, it's still yeah, it's kind of amazing that he came back and he's actually going to be in the NFL. I don't know for how long. Um, but I will say he did his pro day combine routine. He's 6'4", 222 pounds, which is a uh, big frame for a wide receiver. Uh, he'll, he'll put on some more weight. 77, uh, 77-inch reach, which is, right, is, is about right. Um, he did 16 reps on the bench. He ran a 4'4", 4, 4, 4, Okay. Which is pretty fast for a guy who's six four, and uh, for a tall guy. had a thirty four and a half inch vert, which is respectable. You ain't got me though. It's a probably does. It's it's a respectable vert, especially since he's six four. He's got decently long arms and he's fast. Uh, the the crazy thing about him was is that so he pretty much had a uh, one full year in in college because he didn't play much his first year and well technically he only played he only like played one game in his first year but his second year at uh at the farm played and <clears throat> didn't play that many games didn't have much production and last year he uh obviously the covid year stanford didn't mm-hmm. play very much in the covid year So he didn't have much production. Actually, he didn't have that many receptions, only like two to three a game until the last game of the season where he had 16 receptions and three touchdowns in a game that went to double overtime. So the the boy can do shit, right? And he's actually a pretty good guy. From what I've seen, I I think he just got recently married and stuff. He's a, seems like a pretty, pretty commendable dude. Actually, Mm. uh, I like Simi Fajoko. Very fitting character for the Stanford University. For sure. They, there's a reason why I like Stanford. Um, I'm, I'm having fun with these wide receivers because there's so many wide receivers out there that oh, yeah. get – they sneak in. You know, mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of big names out there for the, from Alabama and Clemson and all that, but there's so many – like. Personally, as a Stanford fan, I'm always like wondering who's going to be the next Doug Baldwin. Right? Shout out to Doug Baldwin. Doug Baldwin wasn't even drafted. He, uh, Doug Baldwin, turned out to be a great, a great pickup for basically for free. You know, didn't even have to spend a draft pick on him. Next so, to nothing. 
And and Stanford's known for doing that. I mean, it's not like Richard Sherman was this prized athlete out of college. He was a wide receiver and then got pissed off because Jim Harbaugh told him to be a cornerback. So and here he is, you know, a few years later saying that he was the best ever and um he's not, but he's pretty damn good. So big mouth, big star. Big personality. Yep. So smart guy. We're getting to the end of the show and I'm gonna wrap it up with Husky's mind blowers. Ooh, wee, well, this is a this, this is a bit of a trivia question for you. Oh, okay. Um, that's weird. I put in my notes the biggest productor. <laughs> I love what oh, I'm talking about. I love what I do. Eh? Yeah, I, I I value myself to be a pretty decent writer, but I make those little mistakes for stupid reasons. I don't know. Who uh who's the biggest producer of tires? They um I'll, I'll drop a, a little stat for you. They make three hundred and six million tires a year. Who makes the most tires a year? And this is the brand, right? Obviously. The brand. It's not good year, is it? No, sir. Dang. Toyo? Nope. Mm, it's not that fat ass Michelin man. You'll never get it. Oh, Ever. Like this is per- this per- is going to trip you up. You'll never get it. I don't know. Lego. Lego produces the most tires. <laughs> you talking about like Legos, like what I got in my drawer over here? Yeah. Yeah, I got Legos. What's up? Come see me about it. Lego produces 306 million tires a year. They may be small, but there's a lot of them. Oh, you son of a bitch. You're talking about literally like Lego tires, like in the Lego sets. Yep. In my head, I was like, Legos makes fun. Like, well, what's the name that they put on these? And then you're like, no, they're literally talking about the little fucking cars that I put together from Walmart. Yep. There you yeah, go. I would have never, never guessed that. I didn't know that shit. I was like, come on, get real. So 306 tires. million tires a year. I was like, you piece of shit. That is the worst trivia that you could ever have. How did you like come across this knowledge? Oh, I do this. All right. This He's is what the writer I do, and I'm the produ. What do you say, the productor? The productor. <laughs> I'm just the productor. The productor. Uh, mini housekeeping for the end of this. Uh, I know what you say. Not your baby daddy. Two weeks. Yes, right? sir. Uh, look for that. Should be dropping about two weeks from now. Initial episode. It'll be a fun one, though. Um. Andy and I, we had to postpone the uh, plea permission to speak freely. He had to he had to go to work, so we couldn't record. Plan is to have that out mm. next week at some point. Uh, job, it's going to be if you guys ever watch the Jocko podcast. This is going to be the anti Jocko podcast. As much as I love Jocko, we're going to talk about some stuff that uh, so some of the unwritten stuff about the military and how it's m- more of a normal job than you'd like to think it is. And or, it's obviously or. from the perspective of two guys who um, had desk jobs and rolly chairs and sent nasty emails. That's mm. that's the most we that's the closest we got to combat. I think this will be good for all them people out there that like I know you've came across it. I've came across it. They want to tell me how the military works behind the scenes, and it's like you don't know. But now you can get a, a real life taste. Yeah, no, I know. I haven't seen anybody do this. I haven't seen anybody do this. Not at least nobody nobody that gets views is out here really talking about what it's like to sit in your rolly chair, right? I mean, we're in the chair force. What's it like to sit in that chair? What yeah. what do you do? What's the build up? What so, is what's daily and life? And then really there's a lot of people like? that are in the military right now that need to hear it. That's the other side is they they need to hear some of the things that we have to say. Or people so that this are is, walking their life down the line of where they're about to join the military and they're getting fed all this nonsense from this person, that person, like give them something yep. that's real. Yep. Um, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm super excited about it. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what, like how we're going to set it up and like the way we're going to do it. But it's, uh, it's going to be fun. I actually thought about maybe because uh, if he had if he had the game on the Xbox, we've been playing Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and I thought it would be fun to just like maybe do a Twitch stream where we're like we bullshit back and forth about it, and then Ooh. people could watch the Twitch stream. But that's not a bad idea. I thought I thought that would be cool, but 
it is what it is. I, I think we'll just do it's the Spotify podcast not. and we'll see where that goes. Yeah, so you guys are still audio, no visual on that one. Visuals too much work, man. You do you do crazy shit over there with the visuals. I give you props. Yeah. If uh if you need somebody to edit your videos, I'm I'm sure you could pull the Husky Messiah away from left hooks are free. Um, mm. if you offer him enough change. He might have to pay me because this shit keeps me busy. That's what I'm saying. If somebody was actually going to pay you to do edits, I think you, I think you would take him up on that. I might. I wouldn't be mad we'll at see. you. We'll but I think he's doing a pretty solid job. I hope you guys like the new set. The Husky Boy is going to have a new set. Should be next week, right? Yes, sir. It's all sitting in there. I just too lazy to put it together. Too lazy. I, that's not a song, but it should I got be a my, song. I got my little brother coming through today, so I'm gonna put his ass to work. All them shitty diapers I had to clean. Um, anything else? Plug social media. Man, eh, we do that enough. No, I mean, I. You know, we're Go on Instagram. Out. Left hooks are free. It ain't that hard to find. Go check us out on Instagram. We're gonna start posting more. We'll be a little more interactive. I put some yep. polls and comments out there, and y'all didn't say shit. So fuck all y'all. You know who you are. I know they who's seen it. They just don't do it, man. We don't. We don't have an interactive audience. The most interactive person we have is Joshua the King Koopa. Old you talk too Coop, much. Koopa Doop. I don't know. <laughs> He's never called himself Koopa Doop. <laughs> oh, if, uh, when are we gonna get Joshua the King Koopa to run back a little street boxing match against the Husky Messiah this round? Oh man, Cooper. You you're still you're still a boy, you know. Still, I consider you a homie. We had a we had a fun little drunk boxing match. I displayed some fancy footwork and never was able to get inside on you. Um, took mm. took a took a few licks, but your boy's got a chin on him. So any free I, left hooks in there? Oh, I didn't hit him with any. I was loose as a oh. goose, right? The loose words is a little goose. boozy. But I definitely don't recommend that you get in a boxing match with my my good friend over here. He's uh, incredibly hard to hit, and he hits like a truck. So I I disagree. I feel like you should definitely get in a boxing match with me. It'll be fun for the fans. It would be fun for the fans. I wish we could set that up. Actually, you need to get a podcast, Cooper. You need to get one, and then you need to start you, beefing with us. You need to beef with us because I think that would be fun. Just like uh, old, what's what's he call himself? J Daddy? Come on, you gonna call yourself J Daddy? You heard oh, me. You, th- you slinging, uh, you slinging some dirt at the Fisher fam. Is that what we're Jay doing? J Daddy, get real. I love you, man. Speaking uh, of, I love you, but we need we need to beef with you, man. I know I know that you uh, I know that you have some beef with some of the stuff I've talked about. You're probably a little mad at me here and there, and I'm all for it, dog. I'm all for it. Come. Um, I don't hold any grudges, so I know I know you got viewership. Let me hold some. <laughs> Let me hold some. <laughs> so <laughs> get at it, J Daddy. Fuck, piece of shit. J Daddy, huh? All right, J Daddy, big Papa. I see you. I mean, I call myself Papa Glide, but I didn't come up with that nickname. I mean, who called you J Daddy? Who who called you J Daddy? That's what I want to know. Cause we want the origin oh, story. Old uh, hardwood flow. They that was the hmm. nickname he got from his what the Wu Tang generator. generator. And my boy, uh, the Husky Messiah, uh, his prior name to the same generator was Royale Love, which is ridiculous. That's for y'all. And I got nothing good. Were. And I was like, oh, I need a good nickname, as if I don't have enough nicknames. And uh, well, he's like Papa Glide, and I was like, oh, fine, that's stupid. That man I, is had, a name generator within himself. I've had uh, I've had bloodbath because I'm always bleeding. I always get hurt. Check out check out my neck. I got in jujitsu. Um, Larry Turd. Larry Turd because I got the Scr- ugliest jump shot known to man. It, it Scrawny goes in white. like Larry Bird. Scrawny White. Scrawny White was a good one. Elmer Mud. Mm, mud We're not going to mention why they called me Elmer Mud. The mud drank. <laughs> Um, and here I am. So tell tell me, J Daddy, where'd you get the name J Daddy? With, with isn't he put two E's at the end of it? Correct, J Daddy. Uh, 
I'm, I'm here for you, man. I support what you're doing. Obviously, we're trying to do the same, and you are yeah. far more successful. So I give you props, my friend. Um, if you don't know, the Fisher family is out there. I'll plug your shit. Just to let people Go check know. Them out. They got um, fun videos. Let's like let's give some credit. Their videos are fun. Some of them, yeah. I wa- I watch your videos sometimes, my boy. And I don't mean Shout to say to that me. I'm not gonna call you. I'm not calling you boy because black dog. I don't do that. You know this. Well, okay. We'll, we'll I just have to make sure because like he he somewhat thinks I'm a racist, man. Like I know he does. I love this dude. He Ooh, acts like yeah. he acts like I didn't like I didn't like him when I was around him. That's the funny thing. Oh yeah, for those of you who don't know, we share uh, brothers in arms with this man, Chair Force Veterans. But not you, Christopher Paris. You beef with me too hard. Oh shit. I will do this all day. I got this all day. Who else you got? Name drops. Let's go. Orion Jones with your curly ass fucked up hair you just posted today on Instagram. <laughs> that dude makes me nervous. I don't know how I feel about that man. Like for real, for real. Like I don't know. Orion's my boy down too. I right, he he left the Air Force because I influenced him. Uh, I I sent him down a there. wrong path. <laughs> uh, oh I think that's all we got. Left hooks are free. Right hooks are always half off. I got to get to work. I got a I hour got no 15. job. Yeah. Was that all a right. down, clap? <laughs>